When they say it, you'll hear it. Talk about it on Local Talk Radio, 660 AM. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Is, is Josh on the line? Josh is on the line. Hey, Josh, how you doing? Yes. Good. Good. Can Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you. Mm. Well, you, you guys, go ahead. Well, what's on your mind today? Well, I want to catch these guys up with uh, some important discoveries I made on a Monday. Uh, that was the 4th of July, hanging out with Steve, having a good old time. But uh, we got some callers call in, gave us uh, an interesting perspective. I'm not sure they're not 100% right. So uh, I had a caller call in and talk about being pro-life. And this is for you, Josh. Um, I know you went down to Wichita, Kansas, uh, which was hundreds and hundreds of miles and spent an incredible amount of your own money. And then while you were there, were you, you went to prison while you were there, didn't you? Several times. It was that was for the defense of uh, unborn children, wasn't it? Yep. Well, I found out you were wasting your time that whole time because you're actually pro-choice and ungodly. Because the only way you can be pro-life is to be part of the Republican Party. So I just wanted to share that with you. That's what I found out uh, last Monday that you're actually not pro-life, and you wasted all that money and all that time in jail. Oh. Oh well. And then, Dave, this is even more important. This really hit home for me. You know, this was a revelation for me. I know, Dave, you're the, you head up the Austrian scholars, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they, that's mainly book reading, isn't it? Right. And how old are you? 27. Well, I found out on Monday that reading books doesn't make you any smarter. In fact, it might even make you dumber. And that the only thing that it can broaden your horizons and bring you any knowledge at all is your age. You have to be, when 32 isn't even close. <laughs> so that makes you even dumber than me. I know you, Brad. What, right, what did you learn the right number is on Monday? I, I actually didn't. I'm kind of hoping we find that out today. Okay. Because I'll be looking forward to that. Because knowledge comes from how long you've sat in a cubicle. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. It's just age. When you're 80 years old, you are the dang smartest man on the planet. <laughs> Even if you live in Ethiopia in a box. I'm looking forward to that. Does it matter what kind of box? Well, Living in a box or in wooden, wooden or cardboard? It doesn't matter what style of box. Um, Just one with, one with uh, no reference to history or right, economics, right? So basically what it comes down to is I'm trying to help you out, Dave. You don't need to read. You just need to shut up. Right. That, that would sa- help all of us. Sounds like you joined the Republican Party. No. Whoa. <laughs> well, Oops. I'm going to. Let that slip. Sorry. So the only way I will join the Republican Party is if they have a good purging. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I understand they're already planning that. Right. That was what we ultimately came to the conclusion on Monday, is that if we just purge the Republican Party, Nazi style. Okay. I was going to say, is that x lax style or, <laughs> no, or no, SS that's, style? That's SS style. Okay. No. Anyway, that, now that you guys are up to speed, let's let's go ahead with the show. All right. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, a, a bullet to the head certainly is one uh, quick and easy way to purge, and it's a lot more permanent than the x lax version of purging. Yeah. It works faster. <laughs> For anybody who's uh, just joining us here today, this is Patriot's Lament, where basically we talk about the liberty issues without the preconceived notion that you have to be part of a political party in order to actually get it. And that if, in fact, you are capable of reading for yourself and you are capable of thinking for yourself, that you're going to find that there are some documents out there that really actually have something to say about liberty and that have something to say about personal responsibility and that and they have a lot more to do with uh, private individuals having their personal liberties than it has to do with uh, countries or laws or anything else that man can devise for another man. Uh in terms of what's going on in the news today, I mean, we got the TSA issue. A lot of folks are really um, bent out of shape with the way the TSA is handling things, and it seems like uh, there's no end in sight. What? Where are we at? I think that um, we went out and tried to get everybody to sign a petition to give to the governor to protect us against the TSA, and we got, what, Josh, 100 signatures? So let the people have what they wanted. 
About 350. Out of 75,000. Yeah. Let them have them. I don't even want to talk about them. <laughs> I hope everybody gets their butt fingered. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> now, in, in the meantime, though, I, I mean, just because nobody else will stand up for their own liberties or, or your liberty, uh, what if they decide that the next step is that we have to carry papers all the time on the streets? I think as a, it's pretty obvious what will happen. We'll be all be carrying papers on the street. I mean, let me ask you this, Dave. Uh, get you into this conversation here. From your experience, do we already already all are we already in such a state? Uh, there's nothing there's nothing keeping that from happening. All, all the pieces have been put into place, right? And we've acqui- acquiesced while all the pieces were put into place. Well, let, let me ask you this: If you are stopped by a police officer today on the way out of the uh, the studio here. For whatever reason, let's say he observed you jaywalking from the, uh, the studio out across the parking lot, uh, and he stopped you, and you cannot produce an identification to show who you say you are. What's going to happen to you? Uh, they'll probably come up with some reason to arrest me and take me in. So, yeah, we're already there. So, in a sense, we already do have to carry papers. But it's just a gold star, Steve. It's not a big deal. It's just a gold star. You just song. have to wear the gold star. It's not. Oh, I see. It's not yeah. a big deal. Couldn't couldn't possibly get any worse than that. No. Can I get a gold star? No. I think maybe you already have one. I, you're you're, you're, you're going to be top on the list when they come out to handing out the uh, the gold stars there, there Mr. Uh, Bennett. As to uh, the TSA and, and nullification, there are a couple things. Um, one is Ron Paul introduced a bill in the House. I think it's the uh, Traveler Dignity Act. And it's a uh, bill to abolish the TSA, so that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how many how many people vote against it and who votes against it and why. Uh, that'll be that'll give you a little snapshot of what our society really is. Well, Republicans instituted the TSA. Right, so it'll be interesting to see how they dance around that one. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll keep them in. Oh, I'm certain they will. I have no doubt. But it'll be you know the little excuses they come up with for. For all of the uh, the stuff that's happening, we're going to need the TSA when we start our purging. <laughs> right. How could I forget? Uh, and remember, the other, yep, go for it. I was going to say, remember Franklin said, uh, "Those who would give up temporary security for a little liberty deserve neither." Yeah, well, and we'll, wait a minute, we'll get or was that the other way around? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, well, you know, at some point, we as a society, I'm not sure when it happened, but I, I think we gave up a long time ago our, our own personal liberties when we gave up our personal responsibilities and started calling mommy and daddy to come and handle our neighbors. You know, and our neighbor has some smoke that blows into our yard, and, and, and we have a hard time breathing. Of course, the best thing we can possibly do, instead of going over there and, and saying, hey, Joe, uh, I got a problem with the fact that you got smoke coming into my house is that we call the borough and complain and say, hey, look, what what are you going to do about this person putting smoke in my house? The only problem I have with that, Steve, is you reference a lot that basically you imply that we don't deserve freedom because we're not responsible enough. But that was the same sentiment in 1776. And Thomas Paine, who, in my opinion, started the Revolutionary War with all of his pamphleteering, said to say that a people are unfit for freedom is to make poverty their choice. It's to say they would rather be loaded with taxes than not. Everybody deserves liberty and freedom, whether they're stupid or not. Well, unless they read a lot, then they don't. (laughs) What's interesting is when we see something like the TSA, I mean, they they use those kind of things to uh, test the waters. I mean, we let them have have the TSA route back. Say, well, you're going to be searched now. No one said boo until people got uncomfortable with it, and now it's too late. Look at how many people have been screaming and yelling. And Texas tried to uh, make it a misdemeanor to basically for the TSA to do their job, and it's not changed. We'll ground all your flights. Uh, Representative Sisna, she's been trying to get things to happen. We applaud her for her efforts because she got handled improperly. Nothing's changed. But the problem is we should have said something from the very beginning and said, nope, no TSA, you're not going to do it. But we wait until, well, now it's uncomfortable. Well, it's too late. 
way too late. Now I don't know if any of you guys have seen, but the TSA is planning. I mean, they've written up all about it. They're going to plan on doing subways, trains, and actually checking pedestrians in the street. Well, it gets better than that, Josh. They've already been using TSA agents to screen people entering school dances down in uh, south, in, south in part of the uh, southeast uh, America. I, I say America as opposed to Alaska. It's not happening here yet, but it's only a matter of time, I suppose. But um, if a transportation security administration person can come and screen a child entering into a school dance, then really I think they can do anything. We just need to change their name from TSA to the Gestapo. I wonder if they checked their bungles. I hope they did. Well, they're pretty famous for that. All right. 458 Talk is the number. You guys ready to open up the phone? All right. 458 Talk, good morning. Who's this? This is Randy. Good morning, Randy. I would like to good morning. I would like to say that I am in favor of government, limited government, you know, government that's sharply defined and limited by a constitution, but with elected representatives. And I'm also in favor of governmental force. I think it's very necessary. But I also am mindful of what George Washington said. George Washington said, quote, government is not reason, it is not eloquence, it is force. Like fire it is a dangerous servant and a fearful master. And I think that's something that has proven to be true. But I do believe, and I imagine George Washington believed in government too, in government force, but I do believe in it in spite of what some other people think and do, who do not believe in it. For instance, uh, here on Patriot's Lament uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, a guy named uh, Robert Laferve was mentioned. And I did look him up, and it looks like he had some good ideas about, you know, restraining government, or rather, you know, libertarian type of ideas, which I do believe in myself. But he was kind of a special guy because he believed in no government, or rather self-government. He didn't like, you know, regular government. And uh, I think that's a useful thing to discuss and to philosophize about and to, uh, uh, to uh, daydream about. And it's, it's, it's interesting to think, well, why do we need government, you know? And so I appreciate him putting forward that view, Robert LaFerve, who's now passed away, by the way. Okay, well, go, get, get to a point, Randy. Okay, but the reason we need government is because we need to have police. We can't have just a bunch of militias or private uh, Pinkerton police uh, putting out their arbitrary rules. Uh, we've got to have um, a military, and we have to have a government to create the structure of that military. Court judgments. Randy, can I ask you, can, hold on, let me yes. respond to sure. what you just said. Does not law enforcement enforce arbitrary rules under statute and code law? Unfortunately, that happens, yes. So what's the difference? Well, we try. We want to try to get rid of the <clears throat> arbitrary, the bad laws, the bad rules. That's an ongoing struggle that we I will noticed that end. that is working really well. <laughs> I know. We're and I, we're Randy, not... you like to put me on the defensive every time you call and point up, out something that I said. I'd like you to explain to me, you didn't get a chance last time, why you think that the state should have more control, the state should have more power, and then in the same breath you said it's not the state's duty to protect our liberties. Well, uh, you make a good point, and I should clarify that. When I said that, what I meant was that <clears throat> the primary responsibility is we the people, because we cannot depend on the state to do that. But I do agree with you, the state should do that, because we have all of our elected representatives take the oath of of, of you know to do the constitution and they should do that but oftentimes they don't so if when they when they fail and fall down and screw up and are a bunch of communists as it turns out some of them uh we shouldn't lament that we should just say, say hey it's the guy in the mirror the conservative in the mirror that i say he's the guy who's got to do something to to uh, get in a political process get that communist out of there and get a uh, freedom I, I do it, agree it? that it's the fascist in the mirror that's the problem. <laughs> no, the conservative in uh, me. I'm talking about myself, Sorry, and, and all of us need to talk about ourselves. And I think Aaron was talking about you too. Uh, well, I'm not. A, I don't believe in a fascism. Fascism means government, con the government control, but not ownership of the means of production. Where socialism is, is, uh, is uh, government ownership and control of the means of production. And I don't believe in either. I believe in. Do you, wait, you don't. You don't believe in government control of production. No, I believe in private. Uh, control of production. I don't believe in government-owned factories and stuff. Be like a that. very strong police state. Pardon? But but you but you believe in a police state, Randy? No, no, not in the sense that 